Hello and welcome to your channel AWS Cloud Bytes. I'm Eros Bhavesh Kumar. If you like these videos, please like, share, subscribe, and click the notification bell icon for future updates. Your comments are welcome for making these interactions better. Today we are going to trigger an AWS Lambda from Amazon SQS. Let's see what is in the details. So as you know, the lab is triggering an AWS Lambda from Amazon SQS. We are going to create a Lambda function. And for that, we are going to use an existing role. I will show you the details of the role. Once the Lambda function is created, we'll go and create an SQS trigger. Before creating an SQS trigger, I will show you an existing simple SQS queue that was created for this lab. And I will then add a SQS trigger with this Lambda function. The third bullet point over here is talking about enabling Lambda to insert in DynamoDB, which means we are going to have a piece of code that was purposefully written to insert documents in DynamoDB. In order to do that, we are going to change the code in Lambda. The next step will include pre-execution resource status. I will show you that DynamoDB table where we are going to persist all these records is empty and it will have no messages in standard SQS queue. Then we'll show the cloud logs, which will be empty again. Once we are done with the pre-execution resource status, we'll look at the generating messages. There is a EC2 instance running a script. So we're gonna log into an EC2 instance, execute a script that will generate a ton of messages sent to the SQS queue and the Lambda is listening on messages in the queue. Once the messages are received in the queue, Lambda will process and persist that in DynamoDB. So we'll generate the messages using the script and publish to the queue in this section. Post execution resource status will show information on DynamoDB having the records that were persisted. We'll also see that standard SQS has no messages but you can see the messages in the metrics with the message information that was processed. We'll look at the CloudWatch logs with messages logged in CloudWatch log. You can also look at the details of the messages that were posted to the standard SQS. Okay, I have logged into an AWS console and we're going to perform a lab where we're going to trigger an AWS Lambda from Amazon SQS. In order to start, we'll go to Lambda from here in recently visited, or you can just type in Lambda here in the search. And because I haven't created a function right now, it will give me this option. We'll choose author from scratch, and I can give names such as SQS Lambda. I'll choose Python. You can choose any of these languages that are supported. I'll choose Python. And I'll change the default role. I don't want to create a new role. I already created a role. So I'll choose an existing role out of the dropdown, Lambda execution role. I have already opened this role in a separate page to show what all policies this role has. Um, this role is pretty, um, pretty much having every permission that is available, like SQS has full access, DB, DynamoDB has full access, CloudWatch Logs has full access, and there is a Lambda execute. Um, you may, as a best practice, you should be trimming it to whatever is required. So basically, rather than having star over here, you can just say, I want to read from the queue, or I want to just do a persistence in DynamoDB. I don't have to get a full access of DynamoDB. So as part of this role, I have just created it for a demo. And it's um, selected here. Nothing else is required. Uh, I'll just create a function. Now, once the SQS Lambda function that we have created is ready. 
you can see the code here in this code window we'll go back to the code window later first we'll add a trigger you know to add a trigger we'll have to select a queue so i'll search for sqs and select a queue called messages and if you want to look at the queue i'll show you how the queue looks like i'll go to another tab and search for sqs simple queue service and you can see there is a standard queue uh, named messages there are zero subscriptions as such there is no lambda trigger you can actually create a lambda trigger from here also and there is no dead letter queue or any other configuration it is just a simple queue you can do send and receive and you can pull for messages as of now there is no message so in this case you won't receive anything in the messages collection over here one more thing to remember is this there is a batch size of the queue which means if i go back to the messages you can see in the details you'll have a this is the size of a message and if i go back to the trigger i think okay that size is optional here uh, but if i come back you should be able to see that um, in the lambda trigger once i attach it over here okay let's go back to lambda trigger again uh, i wanted to show you what exactly an sqsq will have so I will select the messages queue and you should check this checkbox to activate the trigger. And the batch size is primarily saying when an instance of Lambda is going to pick messages out of this queue, 10 messages will be picked by one Lambda instance, which means uh, if there are 100 messages in the queue, 10 Lambdas should be able to pick all 100 because batch size is 10 default is 10 you can make it more make it less so additional setting let me check i don't have any additional setting to do you can report batch failure so basically you can process the overall batch and only the failures in that batch out of 10 say five were successful in processing five were failed you can report only five being failed and these five will not be removed from the queue the rest of the five which were successful will be removed from the batch in the queue let me add the trigger now you can see sqs is being shown and this lambda shows that there is a trigger in this sqs that's gonna run uh trigger the lambda as soon as there are messages in the details you can see the batch size is 10 you can actually go and modify if you want but let's go to the code this code is right now saying hello world we need to change it to something that makes uh, a call to uh, dynamo db in update information in dynamo db so the requirement is as soon as you receive message in the queue you want to process that in dynamo db so let me paste a piece of code this code is saying get me Dynamo DB as a resource. Boto3 library is a Python standard library uh, for uh, interacting with uh, database uh, and all other resources that are available. You have number of messages and this event has a record collection. Yeah, over here, you're just printing the number of messages that, we got, that you got and we are looping through each message in this record collection because it's a collection of 10 that you'll receive printing each message in the uh, logs and then fetching the DynamoDB table and putting a response so table.putItem with this particular message uh, in waiting for a response and dumping the response back uh, in the log so all these changes are good we'll deploy this now you have the queue so everything looks good over here before doing any kind of uh, 
messages uh, generation of any kind of messages I want to show you how Dynamo DB looks like so let's go to Dynamo DB it's a NoSQL database let me click on this and click on the tables there is only one table say message if I click on that and explore you'll see number of items returned is zero there is no record in this similarly if I take you to a CloudWatch uh, let me search for CloudWatch If I go to logs, go to log groups, by default, AWS will create a log group, say, slash AWS slash Lambda. As of now, you don't see any log group because there was no Lambda execution yet. And if you go to the Lambda again, um, let's click on this Lambda. We just modify that. If you look at the monitoring side of it, you'll find that there is no execution in last one hour or so because you just created and updated the code so no execution there are no invocations that were present now let's go to EC2 because we want to generate some traffic and in order to generate the traffic we'll go and do that using our EC2 instance there is an EC2 instance. You don't have to generate traffic using EC2. You can generate or push messages to the SQS using another Lambda or um, just using a script. I'm, I'm using an EC2 instance for ease of this demo. Go to this EC2 instance and click on connect. I'll use the connect. Is establishing connection I'll go and um, upgrade my permission and there is a send message Python file which is created just to generate some payload message payload and I'll show that to you you can see that it is taking uh, a library called faker and then it takes an argument such as q and interval and that is a message so what happens is uh, it knows the q name it generates a message and sends that message to the q it keeps on generating that message so let me trigger this which will generate some messages uh, in the queue and as soon as the queue starts receiving messages it will send those messages to lambda for invocation like then lambda invocation will happen for processing lambda will pick those messages and process them in DynamoDB so in order to execute this I will just say send python send message dot py and the queue name is uh, messages in the interval we want to send say a few messages per say 10 messages per second and we'll just generate some messages uh, we'll have to terminate that quickly otherwise it will be too many messages so i'll just did a control c to break it out and we can exit from the EC2. If I go back to SQS, you 
can see messages available and messages in flight are zero. But if you look at it, as of now, there is no message. But if you look at the monitoring side of it, it may take a couple of minutes to render all this chart because the information is still getting logged in and synced to various systems. So I'll come back to this in a minute or so. But let's go to DynamoDB first to understand how many records you have in DynamoDB. I'll click on tables. I got this table. I'll explore. And you can see we have more than 50 messages. This is first record that was first set of 50 messages that were given to us in the short period of time that we executed that script. The next one is again, next page, this is second page. So we can see there were some persistence in DynamoDB. Let's look at the log. As of now, there were no log groups. After the execution, you will see that there is one log group that was created slash AWS slash Lambda, which is a prefix for all Lambda that we create. And then you have your Lambda name. Over here, we are having all these logs. And if you look at, click at one of them, you'll find there are reports of when the execution started. This is a request ID which is a unique identifier between request end to end that was generated by Lambda itself. And then you have the message information. So this is the message ID that was picked. Then you have all other attributes of the message. So this is what was persisted. You have logged everything. And you can actually run through these one or more logs using log insight. So you have log group, which is currently one single log, but you can actually have more than one log groups here and see if there are failures. There are Lambda queries, so you can see if there were latency related issues in last execution. So you can see that average duration is 28. I believe this should be milliseconds or I don't think it is second, but this is five minute duration. So this is the like average duration for execution of Lambda. This is, there are more queries, most expensive request you can see and run that. How much each Lambda execution cost you? So you can see this is various expenses that you made because of that execution. Coming back to the SQS, if I refresh now, you should see that the number of messages that were deleted, the number of messages that were received, and the message that was sent in the size of message. So yeah, that's a conclusion of this particular lab. Uh, what you can do is you can actually clean up uh, by going to Lambda and you can delete Lambda um, in all of the resources that you created for this particular lab. Thank you for watching. If you like the video, please like, share, subscribe and press the notification bell icon for future updates. This is your host Bhavesh Kumar signing off. Thank you.